On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to change this single duplex outlet and transform it into a double duplex outlet, just like what you see here. So stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. Just a quick disclaimer, we are going to be working with electrical components today. My electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different, so always check that you're always up to date with your local electrical codes and you have the proper permits. Also, electricity is very dangerous. Turn off the power from your circuit breaker, and if you are unsure and unconfident working with electricity, please hire a certified, qualified electrician. That being said, my full disclaimer is in the description down below. Let's get to the video. So here are all the tools and equipment that I'll be using throughout this whole video. If you're interested and if you need any of this, I'll leave it in the description down below. The most important thing before working with any type of electricity, turn off the power from your circuit breaker and double check if the power is off with your voltage detector. Now test this out first to a live outlet to make sure that this uh, equipment is working. Then test it out on this that there is no power running through this outlet. I'm going to be using my insulated screwdriver, my 2-in-1 Phillips or flathead. So this outlet is a little bit sunken in. I'm using this level plate right here so that it'll be nice and even and not sunken in. If you want to sh know how to fix sunken outlets, check out this link up here. I made a video on that and also to get this product. Looking at this outlet, you can see that there's two black hot wires going to each terminal, two neutral wires going to this other terminal right here, and two ground wires. Probably another outlet going connected to this, just like this. Let's just pretend it's running to that one. Pretend there's an outlet there. No problem. All we're gonna do now is just take these wires off. So after removing this outlet, you probably have two instances. One, you probably only have one set of wires coming through, through here, which is coming from the power, or you have these two sets, which is one from the power and one going through another receptacle. If you have this situation, you're gonna try to segregate the two sets of wires. If you're gonna transform this duplex outlet to another similar duplex outlet, non-GFCI, then you, you're okay with this setup because every one of this is going to get pigtailed and going to be going to the same um, route. But if you are going to change this and it's near a sink and it is a GFCI, then it is important to figure out which side is the power side and which side is connected to the other receptacles along this circuit. So if you're jumbled up like this, it's very hard to tell which one's coming from the power source. If you have somebody to guard the area while you go check and turn on the power, make sure that that person is guarding the area so no one inadvertently comes here and touches it. The best way to do it actually is to be safe is we're going to have to cut off each end like this before turning on the power. So cut off each end like this. We're going to strip the 12 gauge. You can use any connectors that you want to cap these off. You can use a wire nut or what I like to use are these Wagos. They're super easy. Lift the lever and just close it up just like that. I'm only going to be capping the neutral and the hot. If you have somebody here guarding the area while you go to the breaker and turn on the power. So once the power is turned back on, take your voltage detector or the person guarding it and have them or you test out which one turns back on, then that will be your live line. Once you figure out which one's the live, if you're using a GFCI, you're going to be able to feed that live first on the line side. Line is always where the power is coming. Load um, is where the other receptacles are going to be connected. This is usually covered with a yellow sticker and you remove it if there is other outlets connecting to this single outlet. We're going to connect two of these at the same time. So let's get to that first before going to the G GFCI method. So again, go back to your circuit breaker and turn off the power. And again, double check with your voltage detector to make sure there's no power. We're gonna have to take out this one gang J box out and we're gonna have to replace it with this double. So in that situation, we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna take this off. So there's two types of J boxes that you can possibly run into. 
one is the new uh the old work which is this one is screwed by two screws right here this is old work this is the adjustable kind and there's also the new work which is the the J box that is nailed to the studs you have the situation you're gonna have to figure out which side of the stud this is connected to whether the stud is either gonna be in this side or on this side to figure that out you can either grab a magnet and try to find out where those screws are that is um, screwed onto the drywall or you can use this Franklin stud finder these are easy to use you can see where the stud is the stud on this one since this is just a mock-up is totally gonna be on the left side so another method to find out where this J box is nailed at, if you just peek through one of these cracks, you can see that there are um, nails either going to this way or nails going that way. If you have a newer J box, you can use one of these mini hacksaws to cut away that nail that's connecting the J box to the stud. Be very, very careful when cutting behind anything. Make sure that there is no electrical cable or pipes or anything there that you might accidentally cut into because if you do end up doing that it's going to be a very very bad day it's going to take your your short project will become a very very long one to make sure everything's on the clear there's two types of double gang j boxes that you can use both are old work j box the difference on each is one it's kind of like the old one that we just took out but it's a double gang this old one was a screw on one which goes to the stud this one is a double one that goes through the stud as well because there's two screws and it comes out there and attaches to the stud or you can use one of this old work that just has these little levers that sinks in and it sucks between and sand sandwiches onto the drywall now i don't recommend using this one if you're going to be using outlets because over time if you're going to keep using that outlet on and off this thing will get really really um loose and the drywall here will tend to crumble and over time this will get really really loose so what i recommend using is one of these adjustable type j boxes because you can adjust the depth on this one plus it's a lot more secure because it's attached to the stud the only thing that you need to do here is you have to pre-drill the stud before actually drilling this over because if you don't pre-drill the stud this thing will tilt tilt to the left and you don't want that because you will end up having a crooked outlet which i actually made a video on that check out that link right there so it's totally up to you it doesn't really matter but for my preference i like to use this instead flip over your j box and align it to the old cutout on the left or the right whichever where your stud is make sure it's nice and aligned this will save you trouble later on it's nice and level and then we're just going to trace out where this box is going to be cut okay just like that to cut this you can either use your jab saw aka keyhole saw whatever you want to call it or you can use a utility knife okay when if you have that cut there you can just break it off you can take your double gang j box and test fit it right through nice nice and leveled like what I mentioned before, if you're going to be using one of these old work uh, adjustable type with the screws on the inside, let's go look at the angle right here. You are going to have to pre-drill some holes. This size drill bit is an eighth of an inch. Take the wire and feed it onto inside the J-Box before screwing this onto the stud. Okay, so you always want to make sure this one's the hot. This one's the one going to another receptacle. Notice how the box is nice and perfect. Pre-drilling those holes really help because this will make it nice and flush with the drywall and not tilted. Now that you have that box nice and aligned, you got the hardest part done. Let's go and check out which receptacles you want to use. So there are many receptacles to choose from. On this video, I'm not going to go every single receptacle to choose because I made a separate video on that already. Check out the, uh, the video up here on the top 10 things that you need to know before installing a receptacle. It has all the breakdown on residential versus commercial grade receptacles. So I'm going to be using two different type of receptacles right here. Both are tamper resistant. But one is residential, one is commercial. You can tell the quality on the commercial is a lot better. One is a screw-in terminal and one is a clamp type. So I want to show you both on how to do it. 
That's why I'm using two different types. So both of these receptacles are 15 amps. That means you can use a 14 gauge or a 12 gauge wire. In this case, we are gonna be using a 12 gauge wire. All you need is about four inches. Now, I highly suggest that when you're doing pigtails that you use the same gauge type of um, gauge wire that you're gonna be using for your pigtails with the same wire gauge that is connected to these receptacles. You don't wanna mix things up just to make it nice and safe. So now we have everything stripped. We have two neutrals, two hots, two grounds. Only one side is gonna get a shepherd hook or a J hook. I'm gonna be using my trusty Volt Claw. Now I only did J hooks on one set and I left the other one straight because one of my receptacle, that's why I chose two different types because I wanna show you both ways on how to connect them. So one set is one we're gonna have to use the J hook to go on onto the screw in receptacle. And the other one, we're just gonna feed through the clamp style, which is the easiest one, which is the commercial grade. Let's start off with this one. Now, when you're doing this, I highly don't suggest that you backstab the wires in. You can see that there are little, little holes or ports right there. Don't backstab because it's there's a chance that those things will come out. Again, that's just my personal preference. I do not do that. I'm gonna start with the hot. The hot always goes onto the brass color and we're gonna go on a clockwise manner tighten that down so very important any loose um, terminal screws that you're not using tighten it down okay you don't want anything that's sticking out especially if you're going to be using a metal uh, j box you don't want these things flopping around lastly tighten down your ground wire that is done we can put that aside now, if you're gonna be using the clamp style, it's a lot faster and a lot easier. I actually prefer this style. These are not backstabs. Um, this is actually a clamp style. Backstabs are these. Don't recommend them. This one is a clamp style. Now brass, you can choose any one, doesn't matter. I like to stay uniform though, so I'll always use the top. Make sure you tighten down all the other screws terminals that are not getting used. Unfortunately for this one, it's not a, um, a clamp style. So we have no choice but to, again, use that J hook. We have our two sets all ready to go. Identical, hot on the right, neutral on the left and you got your grounds. Let's go hook this up. Now we're gonna get to the easy part. We're gonna connect it now with the Wago connectors. Um, I'm gonna be using these five lever um, kinds. I wish they made a four one because that's all we need, but oh well, uh, there's a five one right here. We're just gonna open up uh, four levers. Try not to make it all crisscross, all spaghetti style, make it nice and neat. Make sure your job a lot easier later on. Connect all the hot wires together. Now, if you see my wires, if they're tattered and kind of messed up a little bit, I do reuse these wires because this is a mock-up. So wire nowadays is very expensive. So if you see that, you catch my wires all, all beat up. This because I reuse it for these mock-ups. Connect all the neutrals. When you're connecting these, make sure that there is no exposed wire on there. And you can see that you did it correctly because you can tell that the wires inserted all the way through there. If you were using wire nuts, you're not sure if this fully connected. That's why I like using this because you can see through this transparent um, uh, window right there. Connect all the grounds. Now take your first outlet, connect it with this one, connect the neutral, connect the hot. And then connect the ground. Now you're gonna take your last receptacle, connect the neutral, connect the hot. You can see the wiring on this is pretty straightforward. Neutrals, hots, and grounds are all connected together and it's all pigtail right here. What's great about pigtailing is because if one receptacle fails, 
the other receptacles along the circuit will not get affected and will still keep on going. It's totally up to you if you want to wrap this up with electrical tape. For me, this is a plastic J box. It's not a metal J box. So, and there's enough room in there for the conductors not to be touching, but it's all up to you if you want to do that. This is where the volt clock comes in handy because it has this push tool feature right here where you can just push this on the inside without damaging your hands. You can use this to push between there where your finger can't really do that and you'll probably hurt yourself. You can use this tool to push those wires a little further back there. Very useful. The easy part of just putting on the cover plate. And that's pretty much it. So that's how you pretty much change a single double receptacle into a double one like this. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave it in the comment section down below. If you have any other tips as well, leave it in the comment section. I would love to hear them. But if you found this video helpful, please hit that big thumbs up, press the subscribe and notification bell because I have more electrical videos coming out and I have more DIYs inside your home and repairs coming as well. So thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.